Okay, uh, so for today, uh, we'll take a look at a couple more uh, sort of uh, passages that we'll be taking a look at or compare and contrast of different passages that we have, right, uh, for paper one that we have, right. Uh, so the main uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of topic of discussion would be uh, whether uh, the new IV, right, has the uh, sort of, uh, whether it be a brochure, whether it be a journal entry, whether it be a, a sort of narrative writing, descriptive writing, right? A, a sort of a newspaper article, opinion, a sort of page or cartoon, right? Even so, uh, what does the different medium, right? What effect does it have? What type of audience does it reach, right? So we do have a different sort of uh, uh, sort of effects that each medium has or stylistic choices or literary sort of effect or analysis right that each medium has and that uh, they try to compare and contrast uh, the similarities and differences between these types of mediums right that we might be able to take a look right and so We'll take a look at two more examples right in this video right that we'll be taking a look at where uh, the first uh, sort of uh, uh, pair to read would be a uh, bad watch can kill a good day right so uh, advertisement that we have a brochure and advertisement that we have right uh, to advertise something right uh, the effect that uh, an advertisement has a specific sort of uh, sort of uh, a goal or approach that it has right to convince the audience right to purchase a good right uh, which is the very effect uh, or the definition of an advertisement that we have right and so let's read through some of the descriptions in this advertisement and we'll also uh, try to compare it with the next uh, sort of medium that we have as well right that we'll take a look at so the advertisement would read right if your watch didn't lie you'd be on 802 by 9 uh, you'd be in the client's office by 10 he signed the contract and by 12 or 15 your boss would give you a nice uh, fat raise but unfortunately you don't have an accutron watch a guarantee to tell the truth to uh, within a minute a month so unfortunately you're not on the 802 Belova Accutron, uh, the faithful turning folk watch, fork watch, uh, left to right to number 25527, 14K solid gold, $275, uh, dollars, uh, 24807, 10K gold filled, $175, other styles at fine jewelry and department stores from $100, uh, timekeeping will be adjusted to this tolerance if necessary if returned to the Accutron dealer from whom uh, purchased within one year. From date of purchase below the watch co ink right so once again uh sort of the uh central to like an advertisement would be the time pricing right that we have in the different models right and also uh sort of the the effects of that sort of watch right that we might be able to see right and so a bad watch can uh kill a good day so again the importance of having a watch a, a good watch right in the sense and so trying to convince the 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 uh the buyers right of purchasing this watch right that we'll be able to take a look right and so that would be the very effect of this uh advertisement that we have right where's the um uh, the next uh, sort of article that we have would be an independent sort of uh, newspaper article that we have, the strange reason why men are uh, wearing broken watches. So it will be sort of more uh, sort of narrative or sort of based on a main idea that we might be able to find, whereas the first would be sort of an advertisement purchasing, uh, sort of uh, the uh, sort of convincing the buyers to buy this watch. The second would be sort of more uh, sort of opinion based, right? An article, independent news article, right? That we have, right? That we might be able to find. And this article would be about uh, do you believe style should be prioritized over substance? So again, uh, whether it be style or substance, right? A discussion about an important uh, sort of topic uh, within watch, right? Uh, with watch that we have, right? That we may be able to find, right? So uh, the article, let's read through the article together and let's see what would be central here. Uh, so wearing a sleek watch isn't just about donning a fashionable accessory to complete an equally trick outfit. It's also about having a practical device close at hand that will help you keep track of the time as you go about your day, right? Well, there's now a trend among watch collectors to purchase stylish, stylish 
uh, stylish time pieces that won't actually work, making them void of any useful function altogether. So what is the point of wearing a watch that, to put it frankly, is broken? According to the Wall Street Journal, it's all about prioritizing style over substance. Men's fashion editor Jacob Gallagher explains that men who follow this trend may have been inspired by artist Andy Warhol, who often wore a Cartier tank watch that didn't tell the correct time. I don't wear a tank watch to tell the time, Warhol stated in 1973. Actually, I never even wind it. I wear a tank because it is the watch to wear. Uh, so once again, whether it is a, a fashion or function or style or substance, right, uh, these sort of uh, questions are being raised, right, that we may be able to find, right, luxury watches for higher in pictures that we have. So once again, uh, while some may view the practice of wearing an inoperative watch as strange, uh, others would argue that there is logic in keeping up appearances. Stefan Visky, uh, author on the job, uh, how to make it in the real world of work is of the opinion that wearing a wristwatch could be a make or break decision when applying for a job. My advice to millennials who use your phones as timepieces is simple. Cut it out. Go buy a wristwatch. Viscusi wrote for a Huffington Post. It may be a gimmick, but believe me, it will separate you from everyone else your own age interviewing for the same job. While the notion of wearing a luxurious watch, watch may not be feasible for those unwilling to dish uh, thousands of pounds on a gadget that has no function, others may work around this by renting watches for a fraction of the price. Shomo Galenter, a real estate broker from Manhattan, explained to the Independent that he wears flashy watches every single day by leasing them temporarily. It's just like having a nice car or a nice house. People's perception of who you are changes in instantaneously without even speaking a word to you when they notice a luxury timepiece on your watch, he said. Whether you think wearing a broken watch that looks the part is uh, worth the price or you're of the opinion that is completely illogical, one thing's for certain, it definitely is an expensive pastime. Adapted from an online article by Sabrina Barb from the Indie Life uh, link of the Independent, an online uh, UK newspaper. So once again, uh, the first uh, first uh, sort of uh, piece, uh, first text, first piece of text would have been uh, sort of an advertisement, but sort of uh, sort of convincing the uh, buyers to get the wristwatch, right? Uh, convincing them of the price, the function, right? Of the the qualities that make the wristwatch attractive, right? A uh, bad watch can, uh, can, uh, can kill a good day, right? And so again, the importance of having a wristwatch, whereas the second article would be based on convincing the millennials or uh, argumentative in the sense that it would try to convince the uh, the audience or the millennials to buy the worst watch, right? Whether it be of uh, use or a function, they uh, the article the article argues that it still has the uh, the functional usage, right? That it has or that uh, it's to be uh, sort of a goddess in a certain sense, but to show show off to other people, right? The, the idea of having a wristwatch, right? It can be helpful in terms of even the interviews that we may be part of, right? Uh, sort of uh, to uh, to uh, fit an outfit, right? A chic, uh, a chic outfit, right? Uh, so sometimes it can be uh, seen as something that's professional, right? Or uh, of uh, sort of uh, in a sort of formal sort of new, uh, uh, interview setting, right they argue right so these are some of the arguments that they give right uh for uh showing right andy warhol for instance would have worn the wristwatch without uh sort of having to uh without uh sort of uh, uh having to watch the actual watch itself right uh, that uh, it would have been to sort of as a as a, a as a, a sort of performative act in some certain sense, right? Uh, to be uh, sort of showing to the others, right? Of the wristwatch, right? That we may be able to find. And again, this would have been the argument that would have been made by the article, right? Of the uh, sort of uh, the the social element of having to wear a wristwatch, right? That we may be able to find that a lot of people do practice, right? That we may be able to find here as well, right? Uh, so the next uh, text that we have, again, compare and contrast that we have, right, that we may be able to find. Some people use uh, sort of the uh, phone as a timekeeper, but uh, here they talk about how wristwatch can be an alternative or a replacement for the phone, right, that we may be able to find here as well. 
Uh, the next article or the next text that we have would be Helen Clark's eulogy for Sir Edmund Hillary. Again, uh, sort of eulogizing or remembering, reminiscing Sir Edmund Hillary, whereas both texts would be sort of based on that. The other would be more sort of folktale or song based, or this uh, no, rhyme based, where this would be more of a, sort of a narrative based sort of article that we may be able to find. So we'll uh, compare and contrast two of these articles, right, in a certain sense, side by side, and we'll take a look at these articles, right, uh, together as a uh, as a class as well, right? So uh, the first text would read, right? On 29 May 1953, a young New Zealander stood up on uh, stood on top of Mount Everest with his climbing companion Tenzing Norgay. That young man was Edmund Hillary, soon to be knighted and to become the most famous New Zealander of our time. Sir Ed's achievement on that day cannot be underestimated. He went to uh, height in a place no man had gone before. He went there with 1950s, not 21st century technology. He went there with well-honed climbing skills uh, developed in New Zealand, Europe, and Nepal itself. But above all, he went there with attitude, with a clear goal, with courage, and with a determination to succeed. The attitude, sir, at uh, can do pragmatism and his humility as the praise uh, flowed for him over the decades and dear sir, Ed, to our nation and made him an inspiration and a role model for generations of New Zealanders. Today, we all mourn with Lady Hillary, with Peter and Sarah and all uh, Sir Ed's extended family, knowing that their loss is personal and profound, and veiling their willingness to share this farewell with us all. We mourn as a nation because we know we are saying goodbye to a friend. Uh, whether we knew Sir uh, Ed personally a lot, a little, or not at all, he was a central part of our New Zealand family. My parents and grandparents' generation followed Ed's adventures. Those of us who cannot remember the news of the uh, the great climb grew up uh, knowing of the men and the legend as today's children do and how privileged we were to have that living legend with us for 88 years. Prior to start at conquest of Everest, the mountain had often been described as the third pole. It had defeated 15 previous expeditions reaching the summit seemed to be beyond mere mortals. It was considered one of our world's last uh, greatest great challenges. So when the news broke of the ascent by... Uh, Essent by Ed Hillary, Ed Hillary, a beekeeper from New Zealand, and Tenzing Norgay, a Sherpa from Nepal. It made headlines around the world. This was one of the defining moments of the 20th century and earned these two brave men uh, their place in history. Then they there then followed many other achievements of note. Earlier this month, the fifth. fifth 50th anniversary was observed of Sir Ed's journey to the South Pole when he became the first person to make the land a crossing since Edmundson and Scott. In Kiwi style, Sir Ed did the crossing on a tractor. From the early 1960s, Sir Ed began the work, which is his living legacy, founding the Himalayan Trust dedicated to the well-being of the Sherpa people in the high mountain valleys of Nepal and supporting the education of their children and the development of health services. Sir Ed lent his prestige as patron to so many good causes, schools and other institutions, organizations and facilities bear his name with great pride. And Sir Ed also served our country with distinction as High Commissioner to India, based in New Delhi, with accreditation to his most beloved Nepal, much loved Nepal. Sir Ed described himself as a person of modest abilities. In reality, he was a closest. He was our hero. He brought fame to our country. We admired his achievements and the great international respect in which he was held. But above all, we loved Sir Ed for what he represented, a determination to succeed against the odds, humility and an innate sense of fair play, and a tremendous sense of service to the community at home and abroad. Sir Edmund Hillary's extraordinary life has been an inspiration to our small nation and to many beyond our shores. As individuals, we may not be able to uh, match Sir Ed's abilities or strength, but we cannot all uh, we can we can all strive to match his human humanity and compassion for others. His values were strong; they are timeless and they will endure. May Sir Ed, uh, Edmund Hillary rest in peace. And so, once again, uh, we do have uh, we do have. Uh, we do have uh, sort of the uh, sort of eulogy or 
uh, sort of uh, description about uh, Sir Edmund Hillary that we find here. So again, a lot of uh, sort of uh, good commemor commemoration of the man that he was, right? Admired his achievements, great international respect that we have, right? Uh, humility, right? Determination to succeed in a sense of fair play, uh, service to the community, home and abroad, right? All these sort of uh, great achievements that have been made by him, right? That we may be able to find here, right? Of uh, the great man that he was, right? Of the great inspiration that he caused, right? Of how he was lauded by the people around him, right? That we may be able to find here. Uh, whereas the next text would be, again, a ballad of Sir Edmund Hillary, once again, uh, sort of utilizing him in a certain sense, but it'll be more of an auditory uh, audio file that we have here as well, right, that we may be able to find. Also a lot of uh, rhyme scheme, rhymes that we may be able to find as well, right, so we'll take a look at this uh, sort of uh, poem as well, right, that we'll also be reading through. And so uh, the poem would read, once again, uh, Ed Hillary, Captain of Perry, out of Pepakura Way, he hived his bees beneath the trees and dreamed about the day when he would climb Mount Everest and proudly stand upon it. His neighbors jeered and said they feared a bee was in his bonnet. When Killer was a tiny tot, he scaled the garden wall and he would dare the steepest stair as soon as he could crawl. At school, he climbed the flagpole high and hung his cap upon it, not knowing yet that he would get a halo around his bonnet. When Hillary grew to man's estate, he still pursued his dream. One summer day, he sailed away with a mountaineering team. The world has hailed his conquest bowl, so I'll make no comment on it, except that he got a KCB and a feather in his bonnet. Sir Edmund, he got married and assumed a parent's role, but he could not rest, so he went in quest of adventure to the pole. His death across Antarctic snows, he ran a race and won it. He brought to fame New Zealand's name in his fur line letter bonnet. Sir Ed so loved the Sherpa folk that for 20 years he toiled to build them schools and hospitals on their steep mountain soil. In every shrine, an image hangs with Ed displayed upon it. It's not that odd, but that he's a god in a Laura Drake Silken Bonnet, right? So Mackie, right, that we have here as well. So again, a lot of uh, sort of rhyme scheme that we have, right? Bees and trees for Puri Day, Everest uh, uh, Bonnet, Jared Feared, right? Todd, uh, sort of wall, there, stair, crawl, high, right? It, yet, uh, get bonnet, right? Uh, so the rhyme scheme that we have, right? Uh, day away, right? Uh, dream and team, right? It, uh, he, ACB Bonnet, right? fame and name rest and quest right uh snows right that we have toil schools and hospitals so hangs upon it right god god bonnet and so once again uh sort of the rhyme scheme that we have the image sort of shrined right as a uh sort of uh sort of, uh, sort of heroic figure right they may be able to find like a uh, he's a god right in a certain sense right uh sort of the uh, again eulogizing or uh, so lauding him as a commemorating him as a hero right they may be able to find here once again as well right and so Again, a eulogy of Edmund Hillary, ballad of uh, Edmund Hillary, right? And so, again, a different sort of text in that one sort of more auditory, one sort of more uh, based on sound, right? With the rhyme scheme, right? That we have other, the other more of a narrative that we may be able to find recounting of the uh, the, uh, the the characteristics, laudable characteristics and the great uh, sort of man that he was, right? Showing how uh, great he was as a man, right? That we may be able to find, right? So the, the different sort of, uh, uh, descriptions about who he was as a person, right, that we may be able to find in the narrative version and also the eulogy or the auditory version, right, that we may be able to find sort of more a uh, poem in a certain sense, right, poetic in a certain sense, the other more of a narrative, right, we may be able to find these uh, two different versions of uh, eulogy about him, right, that we may be able to find one a narrative, one a poem, right, that we may be able to find in this uh, sort of textual analysis, right, that we would have done with this particular uh, paper that would have been provided at this year, right, that we have. And so once again, we'll continue to take a look at more uh, sort of uh, IB text, right, in the uh, in the coming uh, in the next videos, right, in the coming videos to come.